Welcome back to Wednesday Wonder, where every Wednesday evening I'll be putting out videos experimenting with film photography and seeing what happens. Last Wednesday I experimented with underdevelopment and overdevelopment on 35mm film. If you haven't seen that episode, I'll put a link in the description or at the end of this video. And I've got some good comments in the comment section from last week's video from you guys where I'll be playing around and experimenting with those ideas in the future. So keep your eyes peeled out for them. But this week's episode is going to be about frozen film. Can you shoot frozen film straight out of the freezer? Now some people freeze their films if they're not going to be using their films or they might have bought a whole brick of films and they're not going to be using it for quite a few months. They'll stick it in the freezer to preserve the life of the film. Something I've never done. Uh, I've never really got that much film stock around. I'm always shooting it off anyway. Anyway, so uh, something that I've never done is put a film in a freezer. But what happens if you take it out of the freezer and stick it straight in your camera? That's what I want to find out uh, in tonight's episode. So some people say, you know, give it, give it time, give it an hour or so to thaw out before you shoot it. But I don't want to do that. I'm going to put it straight in the camera, straight out of the freezer, straight into the camera, and do shots as quickly as possible just to see what the results are. <laughs> Now, I don't know what's going to happen because I've never done it before and I wouldn't recommend taking the film straight out of the freezer and stick it in one of your cameras, especially a camera that, uh, <laughs> that you really care about. I do care about this camera, but I still want to see what's going to happen. Um, you know, I'm just worried that there might be some condensation that builds up on the film uh, and gets into the camera. I don't know until I've tried it out. And, you know, I get questions all the time from people um, saying, asking me questions. And if I know, I know. If I don't know, I'll have a look and find out. Even then, if I can't find any information, I'll try it out and see for myself. There's no arm. So hopefully that camera don't break while in the process of making this video. And before I carry on, I've got to mention an email that I got from one of my patrons, David Stockton. He sent me an email with a couple of photographs from uh, an old camera that he found. And there was a roll of film inside. So David couldn't find any information on the massive dev chart about developing this HP3 film. So he dumped it in Rodnall for eight minutes. And what he found on the film when he developed it was quite amazing. And there was two photographs that he sent me. You can see there's one here of a, a little girl holding a baby. And another one, possibly, I don't know, an auntie and a mum. And looking at the dress of these women, this has got to be maybe 60s or very early 70s. I would, I, would take a, I would take a gamble at 1960s. So David's mission is to try and find out who them people are in the photographs and try and return the film or the prints back to the family. So uh, there they are on the video. I'll stick the link in the description. I'll put them on my website. If anyone knows, you never know, it might turn up. So back to the frozen film. I researched online to see what the recommendations are for taking film out of the freezer and shooting it. And I found a Kodak page uh, with some information on there. Codex say that frozen film may be brittle and crack during the camera loading or transportation. Furthermore, condensation may build up as the film equilibrates to the temperature of its environment. The typical warm-up times for 35mm film is three hours, that's what they say there. So uh, I'm going to go and grab the film now, stick it in that camera, take my shots, develop the film and see what happens. I'm quite interested to see the results. I did read once that someone urinated on colour film, let it dry, put it in the camera and then uh, went off and took their photographs. Now it's something that I probably wouldn't want to try but they did and it made national press because uh, I searched for it online. I probably, probably not even on there anymore but uh, it was in the UK daily trash papers anyway. Probably a lie. Let's get on. So I've taken about five or six photographs. I'm now going to cut the film out of the camera. Um, but before I develop, I'm just going to let that strip of uh, five or six photographs, let that come down to room temperature before I stick it into uh, the development process. So I've literally uh, just cut the film out of the camera. There's the film there. You see I've cut, I don't know, probably a good six or seven frames off of it. And it's inside the developing tank. It's just drying out at the moment. or say drying out. It's thawing down to room temperature. When I look at the camera, there's no problems at all, there's no condensation on the camera, but then I did all this at room temperature, maybe if it was a warm day it might have built up some condensation, I don't know, I'm not a scientist in that department. Um, it's certainly cold, the back of the camera is certainly cold, but there's no, there's no wet or, or moisture on there whatsoever, so I'm quite happy that uh, my chill C5 will live for another day. Right, so going to wait for a while, develop that film, and I'm not going to go in the dark room. I'm going to scan the frames that I've took on the DSLR, and then I'll put them up at the end uh, for you guys to see. Also, have a look at the negatives and see what they look like. I'm quite interested to see how they're going to, they're going to come out. So uh, I'm going to whack these in ID11 uh, in about an hour, and then get on the rest of the video. 
So I developed the film in Ilford's ID 11 and according to the massive dev chart, which was 19 minutes, one part to one part, but that was rated at 200 uh, ISO. I actually shot it at 160, so a little tiny bit overexposed, but it's neither here nor there. And I started, I, I DSLR scanned the negatives, put them on the computer as you can see behind me in Lightroom, and I did notice there was quite a bit of grain in the background. So just out of curiosity, I thought it wouldn't be fair just to leave it there. So I then let the film thaw out for about an hour or so, loaded it in the camera, did the same shots again. And lo and behold, I had the same grain. I was a little bit disappointed because I thought to myself, by taking the film out of the freezer and shooting it straight away, I'd get some funky looking negatives back, something, maybe some condensation on the film, I don't know. Uh, I've never done it before, but nothing. Nothing out of the ordinary whatsoever. So I'll just quickly show you the scanned negatives. I'll show you the frozen ones and the unfrozen ones. <laughs> And they've come out all right, a little bit punchy, a little bit grainy, but certainly um, I don't see anything out of the ordinary, certainly from taking the film out of the freezer and shooting it straight away. The only thing I did notice was the frozen film seemed to have more blown out highlights, as you can see on the top of the camera, uh, compared to the unfrozen film. But in all fairness, between the two shoots, I actually used the lights for something else. So maybe I didn't have the lights bright enough on the second time round. I don't know, maybe someone can let us know in the comments if shooting frozen film would blow out the highlights. So that's a Wednesday wonder, wondering what happens if you take film out of a freezer, stick it straight in the camera and shoot it straight off while it's still frozen. I didn't see any different, I certainly didn't get any condensation on the camera, but that's not to say it won't happen to you. So I certainly wouldn't recommend if you do store your film in a freezer for a certain amount of time, taking it out and shooting it straight away. You might not be uh, as lucky as I am. Always go by the book, uh, what, recommend, what the experts say, Kodak reckon three hours to let it thaw out. So, uh, you know, do your own homework on that, but um, I certainly wouldn't take it out of a freezer if I had an important shoot. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing around with frozen film. And if you've got any experience with frozen film, good or bad, let us know in the comments. And also, if you've got any ideas for me to do on a Wednesday evening for, for a Wednesday wonder, uh, anything that you have always wondered about doing but never tried it yourself, let us know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I'll catch you next time. Check out the new SFLAB Beginner's Guide to Film Photography and Darkroom Printing. It's a complete beginner's guide from buying your first camera and developing film at home all the way to making your first darkroom print. Packed with lots of information, illustrations and exclusive unseen step-by-step -step videos all in a simple and easy way to understand with personal email support from me along the way. Hit the link in this video's description or visit the SFLAB website for more details.